Good morning to you. Thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. On the show this morning, the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Nandi Kanda, drags the federal government to court of appeal to challenge the amended seven charges on terrorism granted by Justice Bintan of a federal Same high court way. in Abuja. Also on The Breakfast, President Mohamed Buhari downplays claims he has a favored candidate for 2023 elections, saying he will hand over to whoever Nigerians elect. And like always, we will be reviewing all the major stories making headlines across national daily dailies. Thanks for staying with us on The Breakfast. I am Justin Akadonye. And I am Messi Bokos. Good to have you join us this morning. All right. Uh, today is still a holiday for uh, all Nigerians, uh, or most Nigerians as it is. We trust that you're having yourself a relaxed time. How are the holidays for you? How was yesterday? Um, I trust you're going to have a wonderful day today. It is a rested one for most people, but we're here to bring you up to speed with all the latest information and uh, news uh, are making the rounds across Nigeria and, of course, um, across um, the world. We'll just light over straight to top trend. And, uh, we're all aware of um, the Butemeta incident that happened uh, late Sunday night, and uh, even uh, as at yesterday, there were still uh, ongoing efforts to rescue victims. And from what we hear, from the figures we are getting, uh, about 24 uh, were rescued and uh, 10 people were suspected to have died. You know we talked about this yesterday, Mercy. You know. Yes, we, we talked about it. It's, it's unfortunate that this, uh, you have the reoccurrence every other time. I mean, it's been happening across the entire country. But it feels like Lagos State might just be topping the chart, you know, if you want to calculate and look at the statistics in terms of buildings that are collapsing. And then you ask yourself, have we learned anything? At the end of the day, no, it, it doesn't look like we've actually learned anything. Uh, as much as a lot of people say that that building has existed for a lot of time, so it's not a new building. Uh, but the point is, are we even learning? What are we doing? And the, the, the most shocking is that the president, I mean, putting out his condolence message across, uh, you know, commerce, uh, sympathizing with families that have lost their loved ones and feeling sorry and what have you, which I think is just part of, you know, it's just part of the game. It's usually, you know, part of the presidential, it's protocol. So the president has to put a speech, but does he really mean it? And then in the, in the end, you also have part of that speech saying the president lamented the embarrassing frequent building collapse in the country. I mean, really? Really, how does that even solve a problem? Yes, you would say that it is not within the purview of the president, but it just shows you the mindset of, you know, the elite, those who are ruling. I'm sure that, that every other person feels, oh, we are so sorry. We are so sorry every other time. It is not rocket science. We know the reason why a building collapse at different points. There are a lot of, you know, reasons why you have building collapsing. Right? So for every building that collapses, it's just general. They are universal. They're just basic answers to why you have some of this building collapse. And so you would probably have, it could be an issue of, because at this point in time, we know investigation will go on. Of course, the legal state government and the relevant authorities will come out and say, oh, we're going to investigate. Well, I mean, I'm just predicting. And these things would definitely happen. And that's what it is. So we'll find out, oh, why did it collapse? But Generally, because there's a process, so you can tell. If you don't follow the process, then you know where you're going to end. Faulty designs, bad workmanship, if you want to say. You also have issue of foundation failure, uh, low quality materials. You have a lot of people do that. And corruption, where you have people trying to bypass the officials who are supposed to inspect. Mm. So if you have, and then you begin to ask yourself, what, what's the essence of governance? As much as we can. I mean, we can't take our government out of the equation because government is there to ensure that um, things are done properly. Govern, that's the essence of governance or government at the end of the day. So if you have approvals for building, do we do the need for? We have bodies that have been set aside. And so there's supposed to be, uh, before a building is erected, there's supposed to be a collaboration. The state has a body that will collaborate and find out if they meet the basic uh, you know, requirements. Do they have they met it? And then you're also going to monitor the entire process until the building becomes um, fully 
a full structure at the end of the day. So do we follow all of this process is the question that we ask, right? It's a question that needs to be asked. So it, it's saddening that, you know, the, the president would say that he's lamenting the frequency, uh, you know, the frequent building collapse in the country. As much as we're not going to target to him, but it just shows you the mindset. Nobody really cares. People are dying. Mm. People die for no reason. But we need to be responsible. It is not entirely on the government. Like we mentioned yesterday, we talked about it. Those who are contractors are also human beings. You live in the same space. So we need to be guided. We need to have a self-compass. Apart from having the fact that government has to monitor you. But you also need to think for yourself. Yes, I was going to say that because uh, it, the, the, the responsibility is not just on the shoulders of government alone. Individuals are contractors, uh, are people who... Uh, uh, have plans uh, going into real estate, erecting buildings, have so much to do. You know, a lot of times we talk about um, if people have done their due diligence and um, location, uh, choice, um, soil uh, samples, uh, the, the, the soil test and all that has to be done. Because sometimes uh, there are approvals given for different um, types of um, locations and different uh, soil tests that have been carried out on specific areas. For instance, uh, uh, if um, maybe you live somewhere that's a bit waterlogged, uh, there's, there's some specifics that you need to do when you're laying your foundation so that the building doesn't just give way after time. You know? So these are the things you, some people or most people should do when they want to erect buildings, not just to buy properties, uh, maybe um, off Ibejuleki, off Ajegole, off Ikorodu. They should do proper to uh, soil testing. Aside from all of that, sometimes when, because there's, a, there's, a, there's an agency in Lagos who is actually, which is actually in charge of uh, you know, building control. It's called um, Alaska, so Lagos State uh, Building Control Agency. Uh, most times you see uh, some buildings marked X. Over time, if you check the reasons for those uh, marks and those uh, uh, um, X's put on those uh, buildings, it's as a result of the fact that um, over time, when uh, they've been given approval to build um, a particular structure on a, on a particular location, the contractors or the owners oftentimes go back and do some other stuff on it. And that's they might why give you, you three building, uh, maybe a three story building, some might go approval. and build like five, six. At the end of the day, start so, giving But Justin, and that's why we keep talking about mm. governance and government. That's why government exists. And that's why you have these agencies that have been set up. You know, you have government agencies. Mm. The, the essence is to monitor. Yes. So it's okay to say you have a policy, but you also need to, when people submit proposals or contracts, mm -hmm. there should be monitoring to ensure that They actually it's, do. It's There's some people. No. They, but the fact is that... So, so that's where the corruption... For, should we even wait for... Corruption also certain, I agree. No, no. Most people, would, should we even wait for government to, do, to tell us the right thing to do? Because at the end of the day, we know we've been given this approval. Why go ahead? and start building much or more than that because at the end of the day it will give way and so, you'll die. So and it's a strata. So it's a strata now. So yes. we're saying that if we fail that if let's say the contractors actually fail, mm. the fact that you expect that your human compass should guide you. You are human being first of all, and mm -hmm. I always say that before you know we are anything, whether we're you're a man or a woman, or whether you're a CEO, you're a governor, you're a human being before whatever it is that comes, right? So you also need to consider that. For some people who do not have the moral compass to say, oh, this is not right, whatever it is I'm going to do, I have to do it right and all of that, that has actually failed. So we say that's why you have a system to check the excesses. So if we have agencies of government who should ensure that um, when you have a building proposal, who gives approval? We haven't even, we ha I'm not even sure we're ready for this conversation. Because if you move around, I see that we're just a disaster waiting to happen. Have you also looked at the fact that you have houses that are in the middle of filling stations mm. and gas stations? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have all of that. Have you ever thought about it? I have seen that. Is it dis we're just waiting to happen. We will blow up someday. Sometimes but you ask people, yourself, who gives the approval? That's the thing. Sometimes, initially, those areas might not even be marked for commercial purpose. It might just be uh, uh, maybe residential. At the end of the day, you now find... Uh, uh, filling stations and all that commercial activities springing up in that area. And the original plan was not that. I've had to cover a protest sometime around um, Agboike to some two, three years ago. The, the residents were actually complaining that and there was a filling station and a gas turbine just within you know, I, their neighborhood. I have, seen, I have seen, you know, uh, a popular church, right? in the middle of, so you have like, there's a filling station and then there's another thing. So you have the church in the middle. And I'm saying, 
let's not get to the point where we say witches and wizards, you know, the demons have come again. Because we cannot continue to do the same thing over time and then expect, expect a different result. result. And then there's always a human part to every miracle. That's it. So you don't want to die. What are you doing? Why are we doing this? Even with schools. So it just shows you that if the human compass fails, that's why you have the government. That's why you have the this institution. Check. And these agencies of government, of government, you have salaries, the allocation to it at mm. the state level. People are being paid, right? So, so what are you doing? You do your job. You should follow through. So if you say this is what you're going to do, approval was for three-story building, then there should be monitoring and ensuring that there's compliance. And in a state where there's no compliance, then you shut That's it down. Enforcement come in. Yeah, come but in. of course, the issue of corruption will come in. And so you have people trying to bribe their way mm. so that this, you know, agencies or those who are working there would look away. We have a long way to go. It can, we can't constantly behave like this. And now it's becoming a norm. So if somebody dies, it's not a problem. Oh, building has collapsed. 24 people are dead. Or we have rescued 24. And then how many persons? Do we know how many persons were there? And so those people, oh, no, it's okay. And then the, the government will come out and say, we lament. We're so sorry. Really? No, I, I think we need statement. to do they better. Have to statement afterwards. And anyway, we'll move away from that one. Nigeria, FIFA, uh, Senegal, and some other countries are actually uh, in the news. But let's just bring it uh, closer home. Um, FIFA, has, <laughs> <laughs> why are you laughing, Mercy? No, because you remember that particular story that Benna will be, in, will be in fined them 64 <laughs> million yes, naira? Yes, 64. For um, unruly conduct. I think uh, if you look at it, 154,000 million. Okay. Yeah, it would be fifty-four thousand million. But we're actually supposed to pay sixty-four million in So no, but in, in in not in the Nigerian currency. So we're looking at uh, one hundred fifty-four thousand dollars. Okay. Well, uh, well uh, if I have to check, uh, let, me, let me just see if I can, can give a background to that particular story. Uh, FIFA has that's Swiss francs for Swiss francs. Yes. I mean the currency. Yes. So you, let's just go to the to Naira. And sixty-four. Kobo, okay. So we stay with that. I was trying to. Also, be... going to Swiss francs and the U.S. dollars <laughs> and um, euros and um, you know pounds. Sterling. But FIFA has ordered them. Um, Senegal and Nigeria to play one match behind closed doors after crowd disorder during last month's 2022 World Cup uh, playoffs. I recall that fans uh, shone laser pointers at Egypt captain Mohamed Salah as he missed in the penalty shootout won by Senegal in the second leg in Dakar. Senegal were fined at 175,000 Swiss francs over several incidents, including a peach invasion, an offensive banner, and for failing to ensure that law and order are maintained in the Stadium, you know, a lot, but for Nigeria was hit with a one game stadium closure and fined 150,000 Swiss francs after fans invaded pitch in Abuja following their world playoff, uh, world cup playoff uh, defeat against Ghana. I remember that particular incident that happened at uh, Mercy. No, uh, you, you can actually look at it now. Uh, if you don't remember, you can look yes. at it. I mean, look at that. Look, look, at, look, look at the visuals. Oh, no. on, uh, everywhere just uh, went um, amok and uh, everything was just all right that day. Well, we J Justin, it's just... Uh, uh, we have been fined. Justin, it's <laughs> is, is unfortunate that we have to pay this. 64 million we're talking about right mm. here. It's a lot. No, and I'm sure that we probably would have channeled... It's not much. People pay 100 million uh, to get presidential tickets. I understand, but that's <laughs> a lot uh, at a time where we're grappling with a lot of stuff. Yes, I mean, true. I we are probably struggling, and I'm not sure that we're being very honest. Mm. But, you know, the conversations that have been uh, reacting different, I mean, getting different reactions in different spaces would be, mm. oh, you know, we have the money because people would have to, I mean, an individual will cough out a hundred million to get a ticket to become, uh, wanting to become the president okay. of the country. So there's a lot of money on ground. But let's also look at it in this sort of fact. Misconduct, fans misconduct, that's what the government is going to pay for. And, you know, the responsibility of government would be protection of lives and property. True. And also you have the police ensuring that this, uh, you know, peace, maintaining peace and order True. in the country. So it, at the end of the day, it just shows you that the government is going to pay for failing to govern. Simple. At the end of the day, and people yes. were really... And, um, the, the government, government is going to pay time. for the misconduct of people who should be responsible. I mean, look at that. So the government has a role to play. You are respected. I mean, it's expected. The essence of government exists is that lives and property should be protected. 
And so you have the police to ensure that, you know, there's maintaining law and order. And so law and order was not respected. I would have been disappointed if FIFA didn't come up with this. So we anticipated that it should be. Some people were saying... Play behind closed doors. So nobody would watch us. Right? Exactly, because we have not been able to put our act together. Now, and it's unfortunate that we have failed as a people, and that's why the failure to ensure that this peace and order has led us to paying 64 million. Mm -hmm. That would have been... I mean, just imagine what 64 million can do for us as a country. Mm -hmm. We will have to pay it. Otherwise, you know, face being not part of the games entirely. Some people were saying, oh, it's rash. Uh, the gov uh, you know, FIFA should have considered just probably banning us, not being part of the game. But it is a, a national embarrassment, if you ask me. It is really, really embarrassing. As much as it's not the government's fault, if you look at it, these were citizens who went to watch. The outcome of the game was not really good. We also need to understand that garbage in, garbage out, whatever it is that you put, you get. Mm -hmm. So whatever it is that we gave in is what we got. So it's not like you know Ghana came in and did something extra. But we're not able to contain all of that. But who do we blame for it? It wasn't the government. It wasn't even the president. It wasn't even governors or ministers that you know, did all of that. But the fact that we were not able to maintain law and order, it just shows failure on part of government. So government, you can't take our government out of the equation. We will always, government will always be at the center of it. And we will pay that money, I, I think so. Well, we'll play, so. and um, the fact is that Nigerians eventually uh, would have to, would not be able to see m matches live, as in going to the stadium We have to do much. better, Justin, you don't know? you think so? Yeah, we, we should do better. The fact is that, um, like you have rightly said, the police should have been there to you know, maintain law and order. So how come the whole place went um, totally violent? How come the police could not actually put everything in check? You know, But then it has happened, and um, we just have to try and learn from our mistakes and um, do better in future. Let's slide away from... Uh, FIFA banning Nigeria, fining, not banning right now, fining <laughs> Nigeria, you know, 64 million. And, um, you know, Nigerians will not go and watch at the stadium. You know. mm, I'm sure they will put your acts together some other time hopefully, and be of good behavior. You understand that sometimes you win, other times you fail, yeah. and you need to go back to the drawing board and rejig. Let's hope that act, um, that, um, hopes, that brings some sort of level of um, deterrence to Nigerians. Away from uh, FIFA, away from football, uh, aviation. Let's talk aviation for a bit. Um, Dana, um, flight catches fire uh, and uh, take off. You know, a lot of you know a lot has been said concerning uh, issues in the aviation sector and how uh, you know we've had um, plane um, mishaps and um, plane crashes and all of that. Good thing that. Um, uh, no life was lost, uh, but we should have been able to do, uh, do uh, you know, checks, the pre-checks that are done before um, a plane actually takes off to find out that the plane is actually in good shape and um, engine checks and maintenance checks. I wonder what could have gone um, wrong with um, the down of flight, uh, which just uh, started smoking at the point of takeoff. Like you have mentioned, I mean, it's just basic. Uh, it's, uh, you know, normal. It's just a best practice. It should be normal that before you take your car out, so I'll start with the car. I mean, for you, if you drive or own a car, you understand the regular uh, thing that you need to do, check for checks, everything yes, and all of that. Uh, you have water, you know, everything is okay. There's fuel and the car is in uh, a proper, you know, is in a proper state to take off, I mean, yeah. to move. So you have to do all of that. Uh, it probably would just show that. It might just be at the end of the negligence. And so you take the aircraft and you feel like, okay, it's okay to, to do all of that. So it's failure on our part. But not to say that we don't really have, um, I mean, you don't have all of this happening. It, it, it's a norm, it can happen. I mean, even when you actually check, it's also possible that these things can happen unforeseen. But the question would be, did they really do the due diligence? I mean, did you mm -hmm. follow protocol protocol before you uh, start the aircraft or before you have passengers on board and ready to fly? I'm really thankful that this did not happen halfway, mid you know, mid-air. It would have been a disaster. I have been once, once upon a time. I have had a horrible flight experience, and I thought I was going to die. But I never had the time, you know, to reach out to anyone to say, I think I'm about to die. So, uh, um, did you I'm share just... your properties uh, when you? Uh, no, <laughs> I couldn't even. You know how you can't even turn on your mobile device. I spent two hours, you know, 
I spent two hours in nowhere, you know. I can imagine near death experiences. Two hours, three hours, I was just nowhere. completely shocked. So a journey that you're supposed to, I mean, you you also, yes, you were supposed to leave for a certain time, flight delays and all of that, and then eventually you bought it, uh, you found yourself in your destination the next day. So I spent like three mm. hours on air. What are you doing there? Three hours. I'm not leaving the country. I'm in Nigeria. What happened? Are you even lucky that uh, you guys didn't run out of fuel? <laughs> See, I, I knew I was dead. But <laughs> no, the... you're not dead. Thank God you're alive. No, you're just, but you're you know, alive I, I, couldn't even, I couldn't even tell anyone that I was about to die. So I'm saying that, <laughs> <laughs> you know, aviation is very important. The sector, I'm not like we're saying that every other sector is not important, but we need to pay attention. We need to be extra careful it, it, it's, it's very it's very basic you know unlike uh, you know the, the 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 land transportation where you could actually just stop and stop. then do checks and then <laughs> if you notice some issues nothing is even you good you know would you not stop on <laughs> you, you have no <laughs> you, idea you come down from the plane and check you will be floating <laughs> on air at the check. I kept on asking myself where am I going to how, how, how come I haven't arrived right? no we're laughing about it the fact is that for aviation it is um Super, super, super risky, and um, that's why a whole lot of caution, a lot of checks and maintenance should be done because unlike the land transportation where you could actually just stop and do checks, that cannot happen mid-air. So, but if you also want to investigate, if you also want to look at it, because at the end of the day, it's an issue of, we can't actually say because we haven't, you know, been, we're not there to really say, okay, what really happened? And even if they don't the tell us, they can actually yeah. tell you what happened. But maybe you need to do an extra to find out. Are you really sure that they, they had the entire protocol, they respected the protocol before the takeoff? Yeah. That would be the question. But some people would say, maybe some people are not. Those who are responsible mm. uh, just feel like, you know, maybe one or two internal issues would have actually been responsible for that. But it's not an excuse. I mean, we need to be extra, extra cautious. Now, we're very happy that we didn't lose um, any life. Any life life and that's the most important thing it's always a sad story every other time we're not saying that these things don't happen outside of this climate including developed climbs i mean you find that you know all of this aircraft we're just saying that let's pay attention the aviation sector need to understand that it's sensitive we need to do extra we need to be on top of our game let's you know respect the protocols respect the entire process i'm sure that you should all right the last uh topic we will be discussing today is uh still on terrorism still on them the in the uh, independent, is it independent, uh, indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, and the governor of um, River State um, is in the news and he's saying that he actually supports uh, their agitation but not violence. Yeah, which is you, because the truth is, violence has never solved the problem. Have you ever seen where violence no way. solves a problem? So, I mean, so that's that popular saying where you, 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 I mean, it's been said that. Two wrongs can never make a right. No way. So if the people feel marginalized, because the reason why a lot of persons are asking, I mean, you have groups in different regions saying, we want to become a sovereign, you know, entity. We want sovereignty. We want to become uh, a nation. We want just to go away. We want to break out. Because we don't feel part of the system. We don't feel like we're part of the system. Now, that's valid. Everyone has a right. As a matter of fact, you as an individual, you do have a right. I have a right to say, hey, I don't want to. I don't want to. Mm. I want to become a republic of my own. But the approach is what we're talking about. Has violence solved anything? I don't think so, because two wrongs can never make a right. Uh, so the question, if you look at SBOT and uh, you know, all of the analysis has been put out over time, you have a lot of people saying, yeah, it's okay to ask for a referendum, it's okay to want to break out, but the approach that's been taken has, is not fruitful. It doesn't yield any result. And so no one should, no one, no one who is in the right senses would support uh, the approach of being very violent, even though some people would say, let's take, for instance, what happened in Ghana. Mm. Uh, you know, the Rawlings case, where you had a lot of all of that massacre. And so people think that before you get... Uh, the result that you want, there would be a revolution and it has to be blood revolution. We have seen, for instance, uh, with Ghana. But it, I don't think that it's always the case in every instance. Mm. And that's why I'm hoping that as a country we can come together uh, because it's, it's like a family setting. If you have a child that's disgruntled and that feels not carried along, there should be a listening ear. You bring them Someone to the table. Should, let, let let's all, sit on let's the table and, the and talk about it. About what exactly the is the issue? And that's it. But it's quite unfortunate. We're hoping that 
as we continue to grow as a country, we hope to, you know, develop. And we're hoping that we get to a point that everybody understands that conflict has never solved the problem. It I mean, not conflicts, but, you know, violence, violence has never solved the problem. All right, that's as much as we can take on Top Trend then for this Tuesday morning. We'll return again with very interesting and topical issues to discuss uh, tomorrow. But this time around, we'll just take a pause. Uh, when we come back, we'll be going straight to what the papers are saying on Off the Press in a moment to join us again. <laughs>